The Krasnogorsk 3, also known as the K3, is a 16mm motion picture camera designed and manufactured in the former USSR by KMZ from 1971 through 1993. It is an upgrade from the earlier Krasnogorsk 1 and Krasnogorsk 2 models. The K3 takes standard 100-foot daylight spools as opposed to the special preloaded internal 100-foot magazines of its predecessors and comes with semi-automatic film loading using loop formers. Many K3 models have the M42 screw lens mount, which allows for a full conversion to the wider Super 16 format, and a variety of great still photography lenses, such as for example the Mir 20mm, the Helios 58mm, or the Takumar 135mm. All of these will cover the full Super 16 image. Focal length for the 16mm format is a topic for a future video. In my opinion, this is the best camera in its price range to get started with 16mm and Super 16 film. The K3 was never intended to be fully professional, but you get a true mirror reflex camera that comes with a quality zoom lens, the Meteor 17 through 69mm, which is fast at f1.9 and a good bright viewfinder. The light meter dial, using the Russian standard Ghost, very easy to convert to ISO ASA, and the frame rate knob are located on the right hand side. Frame rates are continuous from 8 through 48 frames per second. The frame rate knob has markings for 8, 12, 16, 24, 32 and 48 frames per second. You also have single frame exposure for time lapse and stop motion animation. The K3 has a spring wound motor making it all mechanical except for the internal light meter. You can use single or double perforated 16mm film. Of course, for shooting on Super 16, you will need single perf. Tolerances during production were not as tight as they should have been, but I have seen a lot of footage shot with the K3, and let me assure you that you can get great, crisp and professional looking footage out of this camera. The registration is not perfect, especially at higher frame rates and single frame exposure, but at 24 frames per second it is usually very good and all footage can be perfectly stabilized in digital post. The K3 is a loud camera because of the gear noise, so it is not appropriate for dialogue scenes. Solutions are either doing ADR, meaning dubbing the dialogue in post, or using the following method. One take for the image and another take without rolling film, just recording the audio. Both methods are frequently used in feature films. After each shot, the pull-down claw stops in the exact same position, holding your film firmly in place. Important. If you run out of a spring load during shooting, just turn the crank a bit counterclockwise and the pull-down claw will snap into place again. About the Super 16 conversion. First of all, it works fine and you get great results. The conversion consists of two parts, the widened gate and a recentering ring. Both are easy to find as separate parts. The regular 16 gate, 1.33 by 1 format or aspect ratio is milled out on one side to the 1.66 to 1 format, which is perfect for the 16 by 9 standard. Since the image is widened on one side only, the image center shifts and the lens needs to be recentered. You need to make sure your K3 has the M42 screw lens mount, not the Russian bayonet mount. The recentering ring does this. It shifts the optical axis as close as possible to the correct position. I recommend always leaving a thin film of fine machine oil inside the thread to minimize thread wear. Of course you know how any kind of lens works when forming an image. So the image of the film itself is upside down and mirror inverted. The gate is widened to the left hand side while the resulting image and what you see in the viewfinder extends to the right hand side. Converting the viewfinder to the wider Super 16 image is rather involved. Any kind of professional work done to a K3 would be much more expensive than the camera itself. So here's how you use the stock viewfinder. This is your stock viewfinder with the image center. The new Super 16 image center is about 10% to the right. This is the extended area not shown in the viewfinder. Here is your framing for the 16x9 format. It needs a little headroom top and bottom. Keep this exact mapping in your head. It's counterintuitive at first, but after some test footage you will get used to it. With the zoom lens you will get some vignetting at wide angles, roughly between 17mm and 20mm, 
depending on focus and aperture. To cover this, you need a wide-angle lens. The only two lenses of this type readily available for the M42 mount are the Zenitar 16, which has moderate barrel distortion, but I think it's great, and the Bellomo Peleng 8mm, which has heavy barrel distortion, and the results look similar to GoPro footage. To tape measure focal distance, don't measure from the front element of your lens, but from the focal plane, also called film plane, which is located here at this ridge. And now onto the things to be considered and done that I highly recommend before starting to shoot. I personally recommend removing the loop formers. They often don't retract properly anymore in these decade old cameras. They can scratch the film rubbing against the loops and you can never be 100% sure what happens inside the camera once the lid is closed. Remove these and you can make sure your film runs perfectly fine before closing the lid. Tape over the slots after removing the loop formers to prevent any debris from falling into the mechanism inside. While you disassemble the camera, you might want to take out the film gate, either to replace it by a widened Super 16 gate, or if it came already with the enlarged gate, file and polish it to make sure it is perfectly smooth and doesn't scratch the film. Some Super 16 footage shot with the K3 has scratches on the extended side, but this can be fixed 100% through polishing. Fixing light leaks. Light can leak into the camera through the footage counter, leaving unwanted flashes at the start and end of footage. To fix this, seal the footage counter box inside with black tape all around and also mask over the window outside, just taking a peek at a time. Also, use an inexpensive snap-on lens cap, 77mm for the stuck meteor zoom, and make a cover over the eyepiece cut from a 35mm still photography film canister, or similar, and cover both between shots. Light finds its way through the lens and viewfinder, as is the case with any film camera, but even in the worst case, just lose a few frames. Still, better to keep the camera 100% light tight whenever possible. Batteries for the internal light meter, Russian mercury cells, are no longer made, so you will need an adapter for hearing aid batteries. I personally prefer more accurate light metering. An incident light meter is great. It measures incoming light. If you have a digital still camera, you can also take it with you and measure the light. Choose these parameters at 24 frames per second, 1 60th of a second, since the shutter angle is 150 degrees. ISO according to your film speed. Of course, you can also download a light meter app on your cell phone. Calibrating the frame rate. The K3 is a spring wound camera, and even though the frame rate is quite constant during a wind, it is very likely a bit off, either due to tolerances or changes over time. Hopefully soon, I will be able to make a video about calibrating the frame rate in detail. You can either measure by pointing a stroboscope at the desired frame rate at the rotating mirror when the lens is taken off, or form an endless loop of film with the length of one second, marking one frame with an X and use a metronome app at 60 beats per minute as your reference. Mark the exact location of the frame rate knob and you should be golden. Well, I hope you found this video informative and inspiring. 16mm is a great choice for your film projects and the K3, with some care and tweaking, delivers. Please check the links for further reading in the description. Thanks for watching.